Hey everybody, and welcome to the Kinesio Outdoors podcast, where my goal is to educate you on how to safely enjoy exercise indoors and outdoors, inspire you to experience life outside, and encourage you to live a more active life closer to nature. Today, I have a repeat guest, first repeat guest, uh, Jason Gross-Jacks. Thanks, Jason, for joining me, and uh, how are you today? What are we going to talk about? Oh, thanks for having me, man. Uh, I'm doing good, and uh Doing pretty good, and I think we're uh, going to kind of recap our bear hunt that we just had last weekend and uh, kind of go over the spiel of everything that happened there, the good, the bad, and everything in between. Yeah, definitely. That was um, my first backcountry hunt, so thanks for taking me on my first backcountry hunt. Yeah, dude. Super fun. I think we're going to need to make that a tradition of either bears, yeah. try to get some deer hunts in. We're going to figure something out, but... That was definitely a lot of fun. Appreciate you taking me. Um, so before we dive into the hunt, I want to talk a little bit about how we trained for it. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I did to train for it is you can um, you call it bait. You can feed deer and elk. Um, and I took 80, 85 pounds of feed a mile and a half back to a spot um i think it was a week and a half before we went on our hunt that was my quote-unquote training for the hunt um put heavy weight on my back walked it sucked oh well and that was my only thing of training aside from my regular runs or walking with cassie on my chest you know my 22 pound ruck um i felt moderately prepared when we did our pack in, it was, my pack was 65 pounds, so lighter. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel overall kind of prepared for it. What did you do to train for it for somebody thinking of doing this and um, talk about what it was like for the pack in? So that way people have an idea of like you trained blank and then our pack in looked like, you know, blank. There we go. Do I have you? We're good. We're back. Yeah. So, so what if did you I... could talk about how you, yeah, how you trained and then what our pack-in was like. So you trained for our pack-in by doing what? So I I run probably, I'd say about three, four times a week usually. And I mean, nothing giant, anywhere between like three to six miles, six miles being the max. Not a lot of vert, but uh, get a good run in. And usually go to the local gym here. And when I'm there, what I'm doing is uh, vertical walks on the treadmill. And then also another thing that's really great on the knees and for the lower quads is walking backwards with that vertical. So, I mean, mm-hmm. something I saw from do, uh, his name's Knees Over Toes Guy. But one yep. way to help strengthen your knees and strengthen all that, doing that. And then use, uh, doing it with a medicine ball as well. And then aside from that, doing uh, like single leg deadlifts with uh, put a bench behind me. And all we have is a Smith machine. We don't have a free free weight bar, but doing single leg deadlifts on the Smith machine, and then uh, doing RDLs with dumbbells, and nothing crazy. Not a lot of weight really, but doing repetitions, nice and slow, time under tension, and kind of getting ready doing that. I've been like I told you uh, in the last podcast. I've been dealing with a hamstring issue since uh one of my 50ks last year and i babied it for a long time and finally i just i was like i am done babying it because it hadn't seemed to do absolutely anything and started Mm -hmm. actually lifting weights again with it and that seems to have have, i didn't have any problems this last time like not at all with hiking i was kind of my only worry that i was going to have with the hamstring issue and like kind of everything else from babying it I had problems with my hamstring and then also with my, my outer hip. When I'd do a lot of vert with weight, I'd start getting really tight and kind of hurting on my outer hip. But I had no issues this time, and it was uh, pretty great. The only thing I struggled with is, as you know, uh, my feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I was uh, covered in Luco tape and uh, he was luckily Stefan had some Luco tape and then some uh, athletic tape and swung through and picked up some mole skin and when we switched trailheads and yeah it was a it was a rough go on the feet they were not as conditioned as usual that's for dang sure yeah so um based on your training it sounds like you do that training almost year round is that pretty accurate 
yeah, yeah. I I might have a fall off in between somewhere for like a month or so, but for the most part, like I like to stay in shape for like you. I have kind of my year figured out from January through December. There's something I can be doing in the outdoors that I mean, and I want to be ready for anything at any point in time, no matter what it is. Like like this last one, my got my buddy runs hounds through the winter time and uh that's something like that's not for the faint of heart really i mean <laughs> hiking yeah. up and down mountains in a bunch of snow chasing as he's we're chasing bobcats it's uh it's pretty rough so i mean i got happy to stay in shape for that this that past winter yeah but yeah it's uh try to try to stay in shape cool so it sounds like you again you didn't ramp any training up for our trip how far was no. our pack in um to both trailheads and a just give us a rough idea of what the vertical was like, because we started at the bottom and we ended on a couple spines. So what were those hike-ins like? So first trailhead we went in, I believe it was, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was about three, three and a half miles. Yeah. And Same. roughly, roughly about 2,000 feet of her getting into there, I think. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it yeah. For the most part, uh, a little bit of switchbacks in the very beginning, get some vert, and then yeah, like you said, once you hit those main spines, just kind of following those spines in up above those up above those drainages, and uh, just trying to find somewhere to freaking camp. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, it was it wasn't the best camp spot, but I mean, it, it worked out. Like it was, uh, we got we got the job done. Yeah, and then our second camp spot was like two and a half miles back. It wasn't as far. Yeah, it's about uh, two and a half. I, a little, I think it's a beginning. little bit. Yeah, a little bit more vert right off. Yeah. yeah, that one was especially, especially after being gassed from the the previous uh, like the, the previous the spot we ended up going in. Yeah, because yeah, I was definitely feeling it. Feet were feeling it. Especially, I pulled my uh. Uh, with my feet being as beat up as they were, I think my boots had trunk from not uh, not conditioning the leather. And my last trip I went out was super wet during spring turkey, and I hadn't worn them since, really. Uh, yeah, I ran that last uh, ascent up into there, into that hunt with uh, no insoles, just so I could, my feet could have a little bit more room in there. My pinky toes were getting beat up. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to lose them. I'm pretty paused. I'm losing the nail on the right foot. It's It's black right now. But yeah, it was, it was pretty good little little uh, trip in there. Nothing too bad though. No seven eight miler like I've done into some places. But you, get, it's those places I usually do that. It's twenty five hundred feet of vert over seven miles, where yeah. we're doing that two to twenty five hundred feet of vert in two miles. So it's uh basically straight up getting in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So now that we kind of set the scene for how we trained for it and what the pack pack ins were like um why don't we start with the beginning of the trip so we met at your girlfriend's place left my car there yep. drive yep. over to a town and yep. when we're at the gas station getting some food and fueling up um i go outside and i'm like that's really really loud sure enough air's coming out of your tire so I'm like, okay, well, I'm sure we can patch it. We're both pretty capable guys. So I go inside. I'm like, hey, dude, uh, you got a flat. <laughs> so remember what you said? I was like, what do you? What was like? What do you mean we got flat? Like you, you came in with the most nonchalant look. Like I was like, everything good? Like, yeah, good. I mean, like not really. Uh, we got a flat. I was like, what? What do you mean we got a flat? <laughs> like what? Well, and when we went outside, it was on the other side of the truck. So you're like, yeah. oh, that's a funny joke, man. I was like, go yeah. around to the driver's side. Sure enough, yeah. we had a fall. Because, so, yeah, coming out of the store, I could see both passenger tires yeah. and my front driver's side tire. And I'm like, what's this guy talking about? Like, good job. Like, haha, very funny, Steph. And then you get around the yeah. back and it's like, oh, that's sitting on rim. Like, that's yep. flat, flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it lost that air. It probably lost all the air in a matter of less than five minutes for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, threw on the gloves, got the got the jack out, got the bottle jack out. Luckily, you had a full size spare sitting in the bed, and this was yep. seven o'clock opening day of fall bear season. 
no tire shops open, and the hole was in the sidewall. So that tire's toast, right? Yep. So that probably set us back at least half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. It's, it was a while. Probably about 45, yeah, because I pulled yeah. off to make some phone calls after it as well. Yep. That's right, yeah. You had to let Harley know. So that was a bummer. That really stunk. So we ended up hiking in the dark for about, it wasn't that long, probably about 45 minutes, right? Yep. So we get to the trailhead, and we're like, all right, bad luck's over, hopefully. Trailhead, no hunters. For sure, no yep. hunters. So now we're excited. We're walking in, and we're just seeing berries along the trail, and we're just getting more and more excited as the berries are just getting more and more ripe as we climb that elevation, right? Yep. So we're pumped. Well, dark settles in. You pull your headlamp out, and I was like, oh, I'll be fine. Well, I almost fell off the side of the mountain there, so I pulled my headlamp out. <laughs> started following you we we did double trekkers and we could not find like you said we could not find a good camp spot that night no uh, so not we at all. Out both glass spots and found a camp spot right yep so that night we're setting camp and you set your shelter up i set mine up we ate dinner game plan was wake up walk 15 yards and glass right that was sweet because we're three and a half miles yeah. back. We wake up at five o'clock and we're glassing. Yeah. So that was a huge benefit to backpacking in. Um, I don't know about you. I didn't sleep the greatest that night. I forgot my pillow. So I used game bags <laughs> and I wrapped my hoodie <laughs> in the game bag. And it was fine. Um, but yep. I didn't sleep that great. So um, first morning, walk us through glassing that first spot. So... We wake up, we're glassing. How'd that go? We wake up and, I mean, like he's saying, 15 yards. We just walk over the edge, basically. And the drainage is, uh, it's, it's, I'd say it's a couple miles, like two and a half, maybe three miles. Uh, and we're in basically a, like big burn. It's got some live timber in spots, quick running through the bottom. But uh, we walk over the edge and we glass the down towards the end, like the end of the basin. And we kind of glad we last that for probably what forty five minutes I'd say forty five minutes to an, an hour. hour. Yeah, I think it was an hour. Yeah, just scan scanning everything, and this this drainage we're in, like for the most part, like where we're looking at that point, like if something's gonna be there, you're gonna you're gonna see it. It's a big yeah. burn, and this drainage itself, like kind of what we ended up talking later. I think this drainage burnt pretty hot because there's not a whole ton of vegetation growing on some of these hills. So, I mean, it's like if they're there, we're basically just sitting waiting to see if anything's – there's live standing timber in the bottom along the creek. We're, we're waiting to see if anything is going to come up out of that bottom and get up onto that opposing hillside from us. And, I mean, we scanned and scanned that whole section and didn't pick up anything. Not a not a, not a critter, not one. <laughs> Nothing yeah. in there. That was disappointing. And one way that we kind of knew we weren't seeing anything is – we could see the ground in some spots, but in the brush, we could see trees laying down. So we're like, okay, this tree is laying on the ground. There's no way that tree is four feet, five feet in diameter, right? We're like, oh, yeah. it's, you know, uh, 12 to 30 inch tree. We don't know, right? Um, but one thing that we both did, and I, was, I wasn't surprised when you did this because your experience, but I heard on a Remy Warren uh, podcast that he ranges his spots when he's glassing. So he's like, that's 400 yards. A deer should be about blank big. Um, I did yeah. that because I heard that and you were like, oh yeah, I already ranged it. And I was like, yep, of course you did. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, you, glass for an hour. Go ahead. Yeah, because like you got a point, like fit, trying to figure that out because like until you see that first critter, like yep. you, it's almost, you don't know what you're looking for. Like I explained yeah. to him, I was like, it's kind of like going like when I, around, around these parts go like morale mushroom hunting. For the first little bit, until you find that first one, it's kind of a struggle fest. And then it's like, once you see it, it's like, okay, oh, boom, that's what I'm supposed to be looking for. Awesome. Like, I mean, because like you'll be looking at down logs, looking at things, and you're trying to put into perspective, like, how big is that? Some of those trees, you know, might be 18 inches in diameter. Some of those old growth trees that are falling down, they might be 
three feet across. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. you don't really know, but like you're saying, like figuring out those ranges really can help to uh, like get that picture in your mind of like what you're looking at on that other side. Yeah. Yeah. So we glassed there for an hour. We both kind of ate our breakfast and this was your hunt. So I was just along helping to glass. And then if you'd ask my opinion, I'd tell you, but whatever you said, it was yes. I was a yes man. So you're like, all right, we're moving on. So, okay. So we grabbed our stuff and we grabbed everything but our tents and sleeping bags, right? We just had all our stuff in our packs. Yep. We walked quarter mile to the next little glassing knob. Yeah. Sit down. Was it a little yep. further? Yeah. Might have been a half mile. No, that next glassing spot's pretty close. It, it was, well, I okay. guess a, I guess a mile is what sixteen hundred. So yeah, I mean, it might have yeah. been about a quarter. It's like probably about three four hundred yards. So yeah, you're you're probably yeah. right. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's what I thought. So get over there. I popped out my chair. We're both looking through our tripods, and I'm ranging, and I'm like, wow, this part of the canyon's a little bit bigger. You know, thousand yards there, six hundred yards there, twelve hundred yards there. And then I hear, oh, I got a bear. So walk us through. So you saw a bear. Where did you see the bear? And then what happened from there? So we've been gla- like glassing the creek bottoms is kind of where I was initially glassing that morning, thinking possibly there's something roaming in the bottom. And we're we're kind of at a head where two drainages, two uh, creeks end up coming in two different drainages and they meet in one. And where we were glassing prior is, is just past where those two drainages meet kind of in the lower end where it's all one and at this point we're mainly glassing the right up towards the right side of where this drainage uh, ends up going up towards the base of the mountain and of course like i'm looking close looking close everything and just not seeing anything so i was like all right i'm gonna be i'm gonna check across the other side of the mountain and i'm looking a mile away (laughs) we're looking a mile away and it's it's kind of just like why you keep glassing keep glassing because like out of nowhere at the base of this avalanche chute, uh, perfect timing, jet black bear just starts moving across the rocks. And I'm like, oh, Steph, I got a bear. <laughs> I got a bear. Jet black. Yeah, and one thing, because we were discussing this later, we're like, if there was another bear at that time, we would have seen it. Because as soon as we saw that bear, it was so easy to follow it. Oh, Even yeah. when we lost the visual of the black fur, the brush moved, those willows moving were like, yep. oh, there he is. The willows are moving, right? Yep. So anyways, you saw this bear. Pretty quickly, we determined shooter, right? Yeah. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah, were, so seen that. were not super high. You were like, oh, if it's a decent bear, I'm going to try to go after it. And uh, so we're kind of watching it. And then I was like, hey, dude, this bear is going to that next avalanche shoot. If you're going to go, you need to go. And when you pick them up again, you're going to look in that av- avalanche shoot. So you're like, okay, see you later. So you just take off. Yeah. All yeah. your stuff. I think, I don't think you left anything. I think you took all your stuff. I left, I did, I left my camera. And that's about it. Cause I, I, did, I didn't it. want my camera to be, I knew I was going to have to beat feet over there. Yeah. Cause it was about a half mile up trail. And I knew I was going to have to, looking up that direction, I knew there was a creek drainage that I was going to have to cross. And then basically a ton of blowdown. I mean, yeah. so I was like, I don't want that camera just beating off me. I'll take the phone. I'll record with the phone for everything. And uh, yeah, so I left that. Steph, we kind of determined is like watching this bear. It was coming out of the head of the basin. It was going to come down. It was coming towards us. But there's a knife ridge there where if it was to hit that, it would wrap around the backside and head up canning up the other drainage. And it's one of those moments like you can sit and watch and kind of plan every try to plan everything out. But like it's like for deer and elk, that makes a lot more sense. Let's watch and see what they're going to do. Bear have no rhyme or reason on what they can just be like. They could be sitting there eating for 30 minutes and you're like, oh, he's not going anywhere. That bear can be like, I need to be a mile this way yesterday. For no reason and just absolutely take off. So it kind of quick talk with Steph is like, hey, do you mind? We we had service, which is the best thing. So we kind of turned. I was like, hey, do you mind staying here and keep an eye on this bear? It's like, I'm going to I'm going to beat feet and get up and try to get up on this ridge that should be right across from the uh, this avalanche shoot that Stefan was talking about. And I was like, I'm going to try to get right across from that looking on my Onyx maps and doing my like 
range in between there, it should put me about five, six hundred ish yards, which is right in my wheelhouse. I, I can, I can make that shot usually no problem at all. Yeah, exactly. You practice out to 800, right? Yeah. So I'm not quite just, just under eight. I've been, I was shooting out just under 800 yards. Like it's, I mean, it's pretty, pretty typical. You know, my scope is one and a half MOA, four and a half MOA, seven and a half MOA, 11 MOA. Those are my hats. So it's like, I have, it's, I have it all mapped out. I've shot all in between from a hundred yards all the way up to there. Like I know where I'm supposed to be shooting on my scope. I just, yeah, we'll get to that part, but yeah. So anyways, um, so I'm staying there, I'm kind of watching and my purpose is if the bear does something funny, I'm supposed to be able to let you know and you're moving. So walk us through what you had to go through to get to your shooting spot. So this is in our video. Um, spoiler alert. We have a video. I forgot to mention this earlier. What's the name of the video? Oh, good. So the name of the video, when you search it up for, for purposes of easier access for people to search up, it's just under high, if you look up high country fall bear hunt, it's like the second video that'll show up. But nice. like the actual name of the name of it is uh, seconds and inches high country fall bear hunt. But yeah, I just, yeah. I, I made this, I made the search easier for, for uh, just high country fall bear hunt. It'll pop up right underneath that. Perfect. Yeah. Genius. So anyways, um, in the video, you'll kind of see a little bit, but walk us through. So you walk down this trail, um, nothing exciting there. What happens when you get off the trail? Cause you still had to go through untouched country yeah. to get over to your shooting spot. So walk us through that and then walk us through setting up for the shot. So getting over there, it's, it's about a half mile, po good portion of it's on trail luckily, but like, that just takes me straight up. The bear is going to be vertical out and at a quarter, like about a quarter mile off trail. And like, so I ended up just kind of doing what the bears do, running logs through that blowdown, basically taking, <laughs> taking the path of least resistance that I can. Cause some of those logs are a bit of a climb over and I just tried taking the easiest path through and then ended up getting to this creek that it's another little creek coming down a uh, smaller one, meeting the main creek in the bottom of the drainage. But up in that area, like it gets a lot of flow throughout the springtime. So it's like, it's a small creek, but it's a deep, it's pretty deep and steep getting through there. Yeah. Yeah. So I basically, I just kind of slid down the side of it as best as I could, trying not to eat it and then going over blow down and gotten to the bottom. Not sure, but actually I stopped and I filled up my water because I ran out of water the night prior. Didn't have any. Thank you, Stefan, for being the guy that carried in an extra couple liters and was right. willing to share. So I filled up water right there just real quick, threw it in my pack, and then uh, ended up climbing up the other side. And, and I'm not kidding. It's, it's steep. It, it's like this. There's blow down trees across. So I'm trying to like grab on and pull myself up, trying to get up on top. Got up top above that, out of that creek drainage, and threw the last little bit of blow down that I had to and got to where I could see across the canyon finally. And I'm on a little, another little ridge that's kind of a side ridge that goes down towards that drainage. Just worked my way down that, trying to find anywhere I could that had somewhere I could lay down. Because mm -hmm. it's super steep country out there. And I worked my way, I'd say about halfway down that ridge. And I got to where a little area where it kind of flattened out a little, small little bench with some rocks and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, this is about as good as it's going to get. And I'm trying to find a bear and I could not pick the bear up. And luckily, Ste Stephanie's like, it's six o'clock from that, <laughs> six o'clock from that avalanche. Shoot. I'm like, yeah, above it or below it. Like, what do you mean, dude? <laughs> He's like, six o'clock, dude. Think of a clock. I'm like, God, I'm an idiot. But ended up, <laughs> ended up finally getting it glassed up. And I'm after I when I say I ran, I ran over there at this point. Like you'll see in the video, my hat, I have a sweat ring from the top all the way down my bill. And I'm trying to get my my layer off and just trying to calm down because I'm trying to range that other side and I'm just shaking like no one's business. And I'm trying to use my binos because I'm sweating so bad. They're fogging up. So I had to take a little bit of time. I just kind of calmed down a bit. And finally, the bear ended up popping out just right about where you're talking, right below the avalanche chute. It, right below it and it was just munching berries i had calmed down enough when it was right there i ended up 
get I'm just trying to click my rangefinder. I have a Vortex Impact 1000. They're not the greatest. They work great for archery season, but on these farther distances, they like it. They're they struggle sometimes. So I'm trying to click, 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 and then it's like boom. Okay, I get a read 560. Perfect. Get the gun laid down. Get kind of everything situated. Get my bino harness underneath it for a rear rest, and I'm waiting. This bear is slowly feeding down into the right, and I'm watching it. I'm like, okay, got my breathing under control, and get the, I get the uh, tripod set up with the spotter with the scope cam on it, uh, phone scope on it, and I'm like, all right, when he gives me a shot, I'm gonna send it 560, and I'm dead calm like i felt so good behind that shot i pulled the trigger and ended up losing sight because i mean i'm shooting a 300 win mag and it's an ultralight rifle so it's got a lot of recoil i don't have a uh muzzle brake on or anything like that to get rid of some of that recoil so i recoil back and try to settle back on find that spot and i don't see the bear at all so in the video here it's like i think i dumped it like i i think it was kind of facing it's quartered away a little bit uphill and I end up, I'm trying to look, can't see it. So I hop up and I just pause the video and I replay back about 30 seconds, a minute and watch, watch, watch. Boom. Probably, I don't know, six inches above its back, just yeah. right over, right over top of it. Bear turns, runs uphill and I'm like, okay. So he went up to the right and I'm like, I'm over uh, 560. I'm over it. All right. I hop back behind the gun and I get on my binos and I'm looking and I can just see the brush moving. I'm like, okay, there he is. And he hopped up on a log and started skirting across this log. And I gave out a little whoop and he ended up stopping. And I sat there, got settled and he stayed in that spot. There was actually a tree kind of blocking the front of it. So basically I ended up getting back on the bear. He's moving across this log. I ended up he ended up stopping and I, so I ended up settling on him and I shot for right at about 520 is where I, because my bottom hash, I put that right on top of his back. And when I was shooting 525, that was hitting just below, like it would have, should have smoked him and I pulled the trigger, felt great. And in the video, you, you hear shot and then you hear that famous little, what mm -hmm. sounded like a good, sounded like a great hit. And I end up losing sight of the bear at that point. I don't, I get behind the binos again. I don't see brush moving. I don't see anything like that. You said you saw him hop off the log up above, basically jump up off it and then start. It disappeared. It was super thick in there, like super thick, about six to 10 feet tall brush and as thick as it can be alders and willow. And after that, I ended up kind of losing sight of it and thought I dumped it. I feel like I hit it, <laughs> but yeah. So, um, I was half a mile away from you, and through my binoculars, you know, watching and hear the shot because I was so far away. I watched the bear react before I heard the sound. So I yep. hear the gunshot after the bear jumps, and then I hear the that thwack, and I'm like, pretty sure he hit it. So you're like, okay, well, why don't you come over here and then we'll go down together. Well, actually, we called each other and you were like, all right, I need to go look for this bear. So I was like, why would I not go with you? Like, hold on, yeah. I'll be there in a bit yeah. and we'll go down together. Yeah. So when I was making my way over to you, I lost my way, stumbled into yep. a wallow, giant elk tracks and some deer beds. So that was cool. Yeah. Found you. Yeah. And... What we had not done, and I think this was in the video, is we hadn't eaten our breakfast burritos yet. So yeah, like, Stefan came in clutch. Yeah, so um, we ate breakfast burritos that I had made a couple of days before, froze. Overnight, they thawed. We just ate them cold. They were so much better than Mountain House <laughs> breakfast. Way better. Way better. Way better. That hit the freaking spot. Yeah, so we dived down there. And as we're going down, we're like, man, this is it's kind of thick stuff. This brush is taller than we thought. First yeah. Creek Crossing, um, it wasn't bad. A little bit dicey, nothing crazy. Yeah. Second Creek Crossing was easier, but 
we got into those six to ten feet tall wells and we're like, oh man, this is gonna be a nightmare. This, yeah. So we both pulled our handguns out, racked one in the chamber, walk up to the log that the bear was standing on, and just start gritting and we probably looked for 15, 20 minutes before I found those twigs broken. Yep. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Yep. So then I'm like, hey, I, you know, no blood. There's twigs broken. So we come up and those are were for sure fresh broken. Walked yep. out that way. And we're walking on top of logs. At one point, we thought we saw something laying down. Yeah. And you I remember. See something when, black. Yeah. I remember when you jumped down, the log was at your head height. Yeah. So we're walking six feet above the ground on these down trees. We're like, oh, this is nasty. Yeah. But we looked for over an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Yeah. It was yeah. a long time. We and it's like we ended up separating and Steph went down for a little bit and I tried like our plan was to try to, you know, you try to grit something. We'd zigzag back and forth forth through this kind of stuff. And I filmed a little bit of it, not as much, but like in the video you can kind of get a gist. I'm talking to Stefan maybe 10 yards away, like, hey, you go down, I'm going to go up, and then we'll just work back and forth. You can't even see Stefan. Like, this stuff is, it's, you know, like, it's extremely thick, and the only way you're going to find it is if you walk directly up on this bear. Yeah. And to add to that, that second video where you hear the gunshot and you hear what sounds like a hit, I didn't even know I was filming that. I had no idea I even had that film until the next day. Yeah. It was actually that next night after yeah, that night. like we got into camp and I'm like, dude, listen to this. Like I didn't realize I was recording. I thought I had stopped that other film and watched. I didn't realize I set my, when I set my phone down, I hit record and it was just recording into the ground. Like if I would have known that that was the case, like we both kind of talked, like we would have spent absolutely all day. But at that point we, it's like, you well, don't have blood. What's, what's up? We thought you missed. Yeah. Because there was trees around there. So we're like, oh, if you hit like a log, it can make that sound, right? Yeah. Exa yeah. Yep. So we're like, oh, okay. It's okay. You missed. The bear just went over to this next canyon. Yep. We're just going to hunt it tonight. Yep. So I just, I just want to point out like that's kind of what was going through our head. So go ahead. Yeah. No, like you're good. Yeah. We, at that point, it's like you, I missed the first shot and the second shot you don't have on film to verify like yeah. where I hit. And it's like, OK, that's the thing. like we could have hit a fallen log. Something like that could have happened. Like we're not picking blood up. We're not able to track through this. There's no like you look for broken twigs and stuff like that. But I mean, we only found the one set. Yeah. And so, I mean, working through there, it's you do what you can, but it's. Mother Nature only lets you the, go the direction she lets you go. <laughs> so, and, it's yeah. like, and like bear and bears are notorious for curling up and dying in absolute absolute crap holes, basically. And yeah. I mean, it don't look like a it doesn't look like a giant patch, but this patch is about ten feet tall and wraps from one side of the mountain all the way around and goes all the way up the other side. So, like, without any way to track any of that, it's it's you're literally blind walking through there just hoping to stumble upon yep. something and yeah that's what it was that was it was tough but yeah we decided because we both are really interested and excited yeah. about what we were doing so we're like we're already down here yep we're pretty sure we missed let's just hunt this other part of the canyon that we can't see from our glassing vantage point tonight yep. And tomorrow morning, and we'll just sleep next to the river tonight. It's going to be, you know, 55 degrees tonight. We've yep. got space blankets. We're good, right? Yep. So we walk up this steep canyon after we try to take a nap. Couldn't take a nap at the river. We washed our clothes. Um, those got a little sweaty moving around trying to find that bear. Yeah. And while we're glassing up this other hillside, we're looking at it. And we're like, this is dead. There's nothing. Yep going on so uh we bailed right and we start walking back to the main canyon because this was like a side canyon 
and we're just going through. We didn't expect to see much. We're just kind of stopping, glassing the hillsides every once in a while. And remember, we found uh, those elk tracks, and we're like, why are there elk down here? <laughs> this is a river yeah. bottom. Like, <laughs> like, a lot of elk tracks, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was, there was a ton down there. I was really surprised. And when we found that bed with fresh fresh urine in it. Yeah, that bull bed. I forgot about that. Yeah, and it was like, what the heck? Like, And, I mean, we've been glassing. We had glassed all morning and then been in there yeah. all that, like that whole time. It's like you, if there's an elk in there, you figure you're going to see it. Like it's. Yeah. I it's mean, 500 pounds and yeah. bright brown. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the deal was, but anyways, after we found the elk bed, we found a bear bed. Yep. And while we're walking around everything, we're like, you know, we think you might have shot at the only bear in the canyon. Maybe there was another really tiny bear. Yeah, yeah. Those like, pot, we ah. found some paw prints down along that along that creek. Oh, those were that small. Were, yeah, that was a that was a young bear. Like it, like it might not be. Yeah, sorry, it was a very small bear. Like it's oh, if a bear's sure. got it, like paw the size of my hand, like that's gonna be something good we're dealing with. That that bear's paw was like the size of just the palm of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a tiny tiny bear i'd be surprised yeah. if that was older than like two it probably like, like just probably, probably like a two probably like a two three year old bear doing the size i just got my tooth thing back from tooth estimate back from my bear i shot last year yeah it wasn't a big bear at all and yeah it was, th- it was three year old bear about the same size paw prints we were looking at there so not like yeah, what so- we uh, had originally shot at exactly so we're thinking there's two bears this one we probably blew it out. We walked over the whole mountainside and bears are really spread our scent, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah we spread so our scent. Uh, yeah, we yeah. So we decide, all right, we're just going to climb. Was it 700 vertical feet to What's get that? out of there? How many vertical feet did we climb to get out of there that night? To get out of it was right at a thousand, I think back okay. up out of that bottom. Yeah. Right yeah. at about a thousand. So through. We, <laughs> we descended a thousand feet. We walked around yeah. the whole thing, and then we ascended a thousand feet. So at the end of the day, we had done, you know, over two thousand feet of vertical loss gain, and we did just under ten miles. So we get back yeah. to camp like half hour after dark. Not a big deal. We eat dinner, and we're like, ah, we got to go to the other spot. <laughs> this spot's going to be done. We put our scent yeah. every. Which we yeah. had to do to try to find that bear, right? So it's not like we did anything yeah. bad. I mean, we we were trying to do our due diligence on. I mean, yeah. if we if we hit it and it did get around to that other canyon, like that's what we're kind of hoping yeah. to be able to pick it up and see. But like like I was saying about how thick that is, that stuff. By the time we we ascended that other side and were able to look down into that into that side of the basin, it's just it's so thick you can't see anything. You can see yeah. the top half a very small portion, but at that point, it's like, do you really waste all that time just to watch the only section you can see? And I mean, like, yeah, it was it wasn't worth our time doing that. Basically, I mean, yeah, we could have yeah. we could have bushwhacked through the jungle for hours on hours in there to try to find something, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we spent quite a bit of time, didn't find anything. I don't know. So that night we're well, yeah. so like, going to pack out. Go ahead. I was going to say, basically, so like for a time reference, it's shot that bear, shot at that bear at like, right at like 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. Steph got to me at about 9.30-ish. Mm-hmm. And we were at that other side about 10.30, 10.45. Searched around, did all that. And by the time we had another update, which was when we were finished doing everything we're down at that other creek it was right at four o'clock oh it was four you're right yeah it was yeah four i was o'clock. like let's sleep let's let's take it let's take a siesta till five dude like we've been yeah. just we're soaked head to toe sweat been up and down like in like those vertical feet are ever it's like all just climbing over deadfall the entire time through thick thick bro like it's yeah it's they're not easy miles that's for dang sure yeah, so we really put in four, five and a half hours looking kind of around. Doing everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot it, it was that long. 
Yeah, so I mean, like it's, and after doing all that, and we were originally planned, yeah, to stay. We're going to stay down there so we could be di- see both basins and that kind of stuff. But after all that, it's like, man, we've kind of uh, blown this basin out. I would definitely think. So yeah. Like, I mean, by seven o'clock, it's like let's just climb up this other face, get back to camp. We'll get back late, but we can, we'll wake up in the morning. We'll get a perspective from be able to see everything where everything was at and glass that for the first good couple hours of light. And then if nothing, I think we de- like we need to move. Like these areas aren't they're they're good size basins to come hunt, but it's like a one and done kind of thing. It's yeah. they're like you you're gonna get your opportunity in there. And then after that, I mean you kind of off to the next basin. Like that's just kind of how that that the country that we're hunting works out. Yeah, so class the next morning, dead. So we pack yeah. up our stuff quick. And we pack out to get to the other trailhead. We got to drive through a town. So we got, oh, we stopped at Walmart. I needed a new, new belt. Yep. I needed aqua tabs, which um, aside from this podcast and Jason's video, I actually made a video talking about my gear list that I took, what worked and what didn't work. So I don't want to expand on it right now, but check that out. And then yep. I made a video on my water filtration system. And what did not work, which was the SteriPen and the Sawyer, which Sawyers are like millions of sales. Um, yeah. So I ended up at Walmart buying a new elastic belt and then Aqua Tabs, ten dollar belt, best belt ever for backpacking. Super I'm running, cheap. I'm, I, I, yeah. I'm running that belt. Same belt. I need to be dude, sponsored it's great. by Walmart for belts. And then Walmart uh, ten dollar freaking elastic belt. Yeah. And then Aqua Tabs is what I replaced it with. Got burritos, kind of recharged. Yep. From the nine point seven miles before, get to the next trailhead at. Um, I think we got there at five o'clock or four o'clock. It was. It's about three thirty, I think. Yeah, about okay. about. Oh, it was about three, I think, actually, because I was okay. like, "We'll be at, like, we'll probably be yeah, out of here right. about three thirty, but we didn't get out of there till about four because I, I had to doctor my feet up real good and take care yeah. of. Some, had to go uh, take care of some paperwork and uh, do some other things. Yeah, there was a porta potty there, which I I've used. I took advantage of the porta potty yeah. after the mountain house for the previous day and a half. So yeah. uh, <laughs> we hiked in that trail, super steep at the beginning, two and a half miles. We yeah. get back there, and we just started glassing off the top. And below us, there was a bench, which was kind of cool. But we're like, we're not going to go down there. We can see from up here. Yeah. So we're glassing for at least an hour, I'd say, right? With just yeah. nothing. We're, yeah, we were actually, we were glassing like right at an hour. Okay. Not Yeah, not and, seeing a single thing. And it's like, dang it. Like, and again, we're ranging. We're like, okay, this is this far. This is that far. Trying to get an idea. Yep. This spot had more standing timber mm-hmm. than the last spot. Um, yep. And something that we found out later is you could see red on the other hillside and you're like oh yeah these are the red i couldn't see that so yeah i didn't realize i didn't realize steph has some some color issues some color blindness issues and like that's kind of one of the things like i would really focus on this time of year when you start seeing those red that red change those are usually your berry bushes and those ones that are changing red like that those are usually some of your most bright berries that you're going to have and so I, I kind of, those are kind of my hot areas that it's like, I'm going to scan everything, but I'm going to really focus on in here because that's where some of your best food source is going to be at. You're going to have other berry bushes that aren't quite ripe yet where those, like they'll have some, some ripe berries on it, but also have green berries that haven't turned yet where those red bushes, pretty much everything on it was a nice deep, deep blue or deep purple huckleberry on it. Yeah. So one thing I want to circle back to real quick. Um, I don't have color issues. I just don't like to discriminate any colors. So I just like to just blend gotcha. them all together. Well, makes sense. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, makes I'm sense. very inclusive. <laughs> one's not, one's not better than the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My reds and greens, they're the same. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so anyways, we're glassing there. Um, and we're sitting there and then all of a sudden I hear from Jason, dude, I got a bear. So immediately I'm I'm scanning and you're like, I don't know how you can't see this bear. Well, it wasn't the most giant bear, but it no, was a really wasn't. pretty bear. 
And for those of you yeah. that want to see, check out the video. We got really good video of the bear. Um, I think you did. I got really good video of it through my stuff. Super yeah, pretty. Too. Bear. Um, yeah. So now we're like, all right, this bear, we're watching it. And then boom, it locks in on a really later. I found out red bush. And you're like, yeah. dude, he's going to feed for a while. I'm going to run down to this bench, but you're like, stay here and keep eyes on him. And then depending on what happens, we can leapfrog down and then I'll come down and join you. So yep. what was it like when you took off down the hill this time compared to the for the first time? Uh, you remember I will what say you hop going. What's up? Do you remember what you took with you? Yeah. So like I was like first thing I told, told Stefan, I was like, dude, give me your range finder. Because like his, he has a, he has a really nice Maven, and it's just because it's like every time you click, it just it's perfect, reads great. So I was like, "Give me a rangefinder." He's like, "Okay, cool." I'm like trying to get it in my uh melee my melee freak bino harness, and it just it's not quite wanting to fit with like the system I had on there. And I was like, "I'm in kind of a hurry," and I'm like, "All right, if I'm just gonna put in the lid of my the lid of my X, I'll put it right in the lid, and it'll be easy access." I'm trying to load up my my uh, tripod and get everything in there because of me being a fatty i pulled all my snacks out pull, pull all my stuff out and it's like i'm like yeah, i'm wasting time i'm wasting yeah. time i'm just gonna head down there and if we get it i'll come back up and get my pack and so i take off left my pack of course left the maven in there <laughs> And start descending down, and this this hill was actually a lot, even a lot steeper than the other side we're on. This one yeah. was pretty sketchy going down, and took my time. Tried getting down at least as quick as possible, but as safe as possible. And I get down onto that bench, and that bear, he's just wide open. You can see it with your your bare eyes. I'm like, okay, I need to find try to find somewhere I can get a rest, and it's it's a bench, but. With the vegetation, the only way I can get somewhere I can see was on the roll off where it's starting to roll down. And so I just, I'm like, all right, I, I don't know if I'll get somewhere to lay down. I'm just going to pop the bipod out and I put it on a, I sat down and I put it on a log. And like, I, I'm on the bear and I'm like, okay, trying to get, get steady. And I just, with no rear rest, sitting, like, trying to get on it i'm just i'm way too shaky and i wasn't going to pop a random shot off just in freaking hopes that you know like so i'm like all right yeah, i need to let lay me down. Check real quick so um part of the reason jason was so shaky everybody it was probably close to 30 degrees downhill so it was a pretty steep downhill shot yeah. and when he's saying he didn't have a rear rest well he didn't have a rear rest because the gun was elevated so high to be 30 degrees down that yeah. it was actually over a foot off the ground for sure. 18, 20 inches, maybe? Yeah. Pretty yeah. high off the ground for you to be able mm -hmm. to make that shot. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm resting like this, basically, downhill. Yeah. We're shooting down, like, down into the bottom of the canyon, pretty much. And he's still exactly. probably a quarter of the way up, halfway yep. up the other, and about a quarter of the way up the other side. Yeah. Just wanted people to understand that because some people are listening and be like, oh, it's not that hard. You're shooting off a bipod. When you're shooting yeah, really no. downhill like that, it actually is really hard. So anyways, the yeah. bear was um, how far away again? <laughs> Funny thing, I ranged, <laughs> so when I ranged the bear this time, 560. And it's like, okay, five, it was actually, sorry, it was 561 is what I got. And I yeah. was like, 561. Just shot for 560 on the last bear. When I, I, I don't know if I got around, that was a wrong range on that last yeah. bear. When it, I ranged 560 and it moved to 516 but nonetheless i'm like 560 it's like god's like make the shot big boy like you got this <laughs> so i'm like cool i know right where to hold you know I, i'm perfect I, I know right where to hold i'm trying to get steady on him can't i'm like i have to lay down like to, i just have to if i'm gonna get a good rest so i kind of move off to the right a little bit and I'm like it's you know in this kind of country you got to take what you can get nothing's perfect nothing's going to be perfect so i lay the gun down i get my Bino harness underneath of it, and then like at the barrel of my gun is all these little fir trees, about two and a half feet tall, and they're right in my right in my firing lane. So I'm like, okay, I start snapping those off, and as I'm snapping those off, and about that time is I believe where he ends up walking out of our lives because yep. I snap those off and I hop back behind the gun and I look, and that bear is not there anymore. 
And I'm like, I'm scanning everywhere, trying to pick it up. I'm like, kind of in a friend, like, where did he, like, he could not have gone that far. You know, I mean, it's an open hillside. There is a little bit of brush, but I mean, like, I just, I'm like, I don't know where he went. So I hop off the gun. I start glassing. I'm looking. I'm trying to pick him up and I just cannot. So I'm like trying to get Stefan, I'm trying to get Stefan's attention and he's trying to watch the pair as well. So, and then he's, I finally sees me down there and he just tells me, right. So I keep looking right, looking right, not able to pick it up. And basically that bear, as bears do, he walked into the only bit of brush that's there because, well, the sun ended up popping out in that time frame of where I'm getting my gun set up. That's kind of what we came down to the conclusion of what we think. It had been cloudy all day long, a little bit of sprinkles here and there, no sunshine like at all. And that time frame I'm getting up, that sun, I remember feeling it actually. That sun popped out and he like it, it was hot. Hey, we're in the middle of August. It must have uh, he must have felt the heat from that sun and he's like, "Yeah, no. I, I <laughs> I'm I'm getting out of here." And uh yeah, he uh he ended up at that point walking into the brush and he either a laid down which the notorious for you know bears the like they'll just pop behind any any tree any brush anything like that and or b hit that tree line and there was just a slither of trees that went all the way down to the creek bottom yeah. and same thing i watched him come off the top is where I ended up first spot I'm up towards the top three quarter of this hill worked all the way down and start stopped at this avalanche chute to munch. And I mean, he could have been heading down to the creek bottom for water. Yeah. You know, that's the thing with bears. You never really know. So, I mean, a, he either went in there and laid down or B he B, he's like, all right, I got my berries. I'm heading down to water now and hit that brush line to stay in the shade as he moseyed on down. So after we both lost the bear, Yep. I'm up at the top with two yeah. 60 pound packs and I'm yeah. like, well, we got to get down there. And we both, Jason and I are notorious for, we'll have the same thought while we're hunting. Yeah. And then one of us will say it and we're like, dude, I was thinking the same thing. So in my head, I'm yeah. like, well, we're going to camp on that bench tonight. Jason's already down there. You can glass. It's better for a shot. So I'm like, well, all right, I'll take both packs. And man, I almost went for a ride down that hill <laughs> with both yeah, packs. I, it's fun, I had Jason's it's on funny my how, <laughs> Yeah, it's funny how, like, how he's saying, like, I hadn't even, we hadn't even communicated yet. But my literal initial thought was, like, all right, like, the bear's gone, right? Like, we're, I'm down on this flat. Like, we're just going to stay. Like, I want to stay here. This, like, yeah. we can camp on this bench. This will be perfect. Whatever. And I was like, I look up and I'm trying to see Steph. I can't see Steph and I'm looking up the hill and it's like up there. And out of nowhere, I see him and I see a pack, but I don't see the pack on his back. He's got, I see my pack on the front of him. He's double packed up two fifty plus pound packs coming down this vertical cliff that, I mean, there's, there's avalanche shoots in multiple different spots because I mean, it's that it's just, it's steep. And I was like, I, need to not be an a-hole i gotta go help this guy real quick <laughs> which was nice i appreciated that so uh, of course got down there we got down there we glassed the rest of the night bear didn't show up again um pitched our our shelters ate a pretty good dinner that night i had found my mm -hmm. vitamins so we both got multivitamins, fish oils and sleeping pills so both of us conked out hard that night which was oh, great yeah. Yeah. Next morning, glass for an hour, hour 15 at the first spot. Yep. Nothing. Moved up the creek drainage a bit to the bottom of an avalanche chute rock slide. We glassed yep. there for, gosh, 30, 45 minutes. And then yep. uh, once again, so now we're glassing to, we're glassing, um, one and a half to two miles away in some spots we can see pretty high up above yep. timberline and then we're looking across us you know five seven eight hundred yards and we're quiet we're looking we're eating our snacks and then once again i hear elk bull 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 so i got then, some bulls <laughs> how is this guy finding stuff and i'm just seeing nothing yeah well come to find out there was just the light color of the fur just happened to 
kind of dance into your it's, binoculars it's, there. It's just one of those like you you pass and it's like like I was telling him, I was like I passed through that area like three four times and didn't yeah. pick a single thing up because like say like say they're down feeding they're not moving at all. All it takes is I when I was passing by, I saw the elk. It was like. That bull, the bull kept like doing this with his antlers, just like kind of reaching back. I just saw the quick movement of his head as I was kind of slow scanning through, and I stopped and I was like, I got some elk. It's like, oh, I got a bull. I got two bulls. So like, one's nice. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to pull the spotter out real quick because like I saw the little finger off where they're at, and I started pulling the spotter out, explaining to him. And then he's like, okay, I got him. He's like, dude, there's three. There's three bulls. I didn't see that the third one. Was but, a Dude, stud, stud. Yeah, especially so, for, especially those... for the unit we were in. That's a complete yeah. oh, general yeah. unit, yeah. and like not known for big elk. Like not known yeah, sure. for big elk. Don't get me wrong, he ain't a three fifty, three eighty bull, but for like, Oregon's not really known for that a whole lot, except for in like two units where yeah. we're at. Uh, he was a solid three twenty, three twenty plus, and yeah. was yeah, not. I wouldn't be surprised if he finished out at three thirty. But for he's, sure, he'll he's, end he's over 320. Stud. Yeah, stud. So for those of you that are going to watch our video, which everybody should, um, this is just like the nitty gritty. The video does a pretty good job of telling a story. So good job, Jason. Um, in the video, Great. you just see velvet bulls with just these beautiful long fronts curling up. Nice, yeah. really light brown antlers. Yep. Uh, we watch them for a bit. And then you're like, dude, bulls are cool, but... It's bear season, not bull season. So, yeah. <laughs> so you went back to our camp spot, glass there for probably about an hour. I stayed watching the bulls and then watching the top of the yeah. canyon. Both of us saw nothing, went back. We ate most of our food so we didn't have to pack it out. Yep. That's a pro tip. If you don't want to carry weight, just eat it. And uh, <laughs> packed up that super steep rock slide thing that we walked down yeah. two and a half miles out the trail. and. That was the end of our trip. So first bear yep. missed by a couple inches. Second bear, what? A couple ten, seconds, dude. Ten seconds, Pop. maybe twenty. Yeah. And ten, you would have had a shot. Yeah, my girlfriend she was giving me. Sh we watched it together this weekend, and uh, she's like, "If you didn't stop to film, you probably could have killed it." I was <laughs> like, "I'm." I thought the same thing. Don't I was like, I get it. Like if I, I was like, I only, I, all I say is I'm like, we, I was like, Stefan and I hiked in here. We got set up. We glassed for a little bit and ended up picking up a bear. I bombed off this hill and I was like, I'm on it now. I was like, I'm going to get set up and try and get a shot. That's all I said. <laughs> but yeah, still, I, I mean, know. like 10 yeah. seconds, man. I was like, no. I would I would have never thought with the way it was sitting in that patch munching. I thought, was that, you know, it, yeah, and, but like I said, bears have no rhyme or reason to what they do in life. Yeah, they, they just don't. they just venture yeah. matter there. Yep. But no. it was a it was a great first backpack trip for us, especially like you never know going like Steph and I. We spent a whole September together guiding, and I knew the dude that like he's not gonna have an issue staying out doing any of this kind of stuff. He he loves the outdoors. He's an avid hunter, and he wants to do this. But you never really know hiking into certain country what it's going to be like with people. Yeah, like I've had I I've had past hunting partners in the past or past people I've tried going on backcountry shed trips with, and the trips end early because they every, they, there's all the excuses in the world. You know what I mean? They didn't yep. tell their girlfriend that they're going to be gone this long. They can't be gone this long. Oh, this is really bothering them, and they don't want to get hurt. Work like. Little things that it's like, dude, like that's you're gonna be okay with that. Like, I, I, looking at it, like you're fine. Take a couple ibuprofen and we'll be good. Like, we hiked, we drove four hours over here and hiked all the way. And like, let's not ruin this. But I've had that happen plenty of times. Yeah. And I'll say for a first trip with Steph going into, especially this kind of country in the way it was, like, it like we're we're doing this again in the future. This is a uh, gonna be. A long standing thing. We'll try to make a ritual of it at least once or twice every year to get sure. out and get a nice cool trip in because it was a it was a good time and we just have great chemistry. Try finding someone you hunt together while with is uh it, it's not easy to come by. Yeah, it's tough and it's funny because like you hear the same brother from another mother, but most people yeah. <laughs> can't get in my head. It's you and my dad. I can look at my dad yeah. hunting 
we'll see a split in some trails or we'll be like, Ooh, yeah. new country. That looks good. That looks good. And we don't even talk. Yeah. We just separate and we know we're going to meet somewhere at the end. It's the yep. same thing with you, right? You yep. knew we were going to camp on that bench. I already had our packs, both of them on me. Yeah. I was our. <laughs> I, look, I, I look up and he's already on his way down with it. I'm like, nice. <laughs> yeah. So yep. we do have really good. Um, we get along really well, obviously. Really yep. good chemistry. And we both have the mentality of like, new country. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So that's I'm not really afraid. Like, like, we're not afraid to bounce ideas off each other either. Like, yeah. That's yeah. like it. Like, like, or concerns or certain things. Because I mean, like, where we were at, laid up at one point in time on the first bear, I had a kind of given up hope. But like Steph, he had pointed out, it's a very obvious thing. It's like, hey, should we probably need to be care- cautious of being here because that wind's ripping up that canyon right now. Yeah. And I mean, anyone that hunts, you know, wind is absolutely the most important thing. Yeah. But like just things like that, and he, like he's not afraid to tell me that either, because it's like I'm being, I'm kind of, I had, I was kind of in my head at that point, kind of Debbie downed, and, but I mean, yeah, we just we're not afraid to run things by each other at all, and like honestly, like you're you're the only person I've met that is also as passionate about this as I am. Like when we talk about things like you do research 24 seven, you think about hunting 24 seven. Like there's not a thing that I know that you don't kind of fit. Like, I mean, we're on the same level. I mean, which is awesome. Yeah. We're both pretty nerdy about it, which um, yeah. I don't think that 24 seven, I'm trying to get a PhD and trying to be married, you got, but you got I, I will <laughs> say, I will be honest. Bridget does get irritated with how much I think and talk about hunting. Sometimes she's like, you know, it's not hunting season, so stop talking about it. And I'm like, but I can't. <laughs> if it's not hunt season, it's scouting season. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> yeah. it's e-scouting or boots on the ground. Yeah. Yep. So anyways, yeah, like you said, we just, we hunt well together. We did an elk camp. This was different because it's backcountry. We were more yep. remote, whatever. If something yep. happened to you or something happened to me, we're going to be fine. We're going to figure it out. So yep. I definitely had a good time. I do want to end this with saying if anybody is interested, just go even if you just go out half a mile away from your truck and you camp 10 feet off of the trail and you can run back to your truck in case you hear something that goes bump at the night which i thought a bear was smacking on my tent in the middle of the night i did that first night the wind was ripping and i kept hearing like swish 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 and i was like is there a bear pawing my tent and then i heard heavy footsteps it was just the wind so here I am making YouTube videos and podcasts about it. And I legitimately thought there's a bear. Well, I smacked my tent, poked my head out, nothing. So I was like, okay, I guess it's fine. If there's a bear, it left me alone. I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> it took me a while to get there. But if you're thinking about this, just go do it. But try to go and yep. do this experience with someone that's more experienced. Um, I backpacked before. Jason, you've backpack hunted more times than I backpacked. So you were a great person yeah. for me to go out with for my first trip. Um, again, everybody, just go out and try it. You don't have to try hunting at first. Go when the weather is super nice and comfortable and it's not yep. ugly. And yep. just try it. If you like it, cool. If it's not for you, now you know. But if it is yep. for you, you just unlock something that's really unique. So Damn it. um, I think we, can, we can end it there unless you have any last messages for anybody. Um, definitely go watch the film seconds and inches but if you have something to close us off with we can get out of here basically same thing he said man it just just give a shot get out there it's hunting is one of the biggest loves and passions in life and then backcountry hunting came around and it unlocked a whole new world for me of those kind of things like just just pick a spot that you think looks awesome and just go like it, it it's an amazing experience it really is yeah, cool. Well, on that note, I want to thank everybody for uh, listening. For those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. Um, if you have done any backcountry hunts or if you're curious about kind of getting started, leave us some comments in the YouTube video. I'll try to get, give you an answer. Um, Jason, your YouTube channel is your mom's favorite outdoorsman. So check out the video, yeah. Seconds and Inches. Jason told us how to search it. And then your Instagram is Backcountry Bearju, right? Yes, sir. So any questions, yep. feel free to shoot Jason a 
DM on yep. Instagram. Feel free to shoot me, Kinesio Outdoors, a DM on Instagram. Um, feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube video. Both of us look at those because I want to get it because I was in the video. Um, and we'll try to help you out if we can. But yeah, just want to yep. encourage everybody to get out and live it. This is going to come out a couple of weeks before elk season. So fall bear will be kind of winding down. We'll be ramping up into elk. So I want to wish everybody good luck. And we'll catch you on the next podcast. Thanks for listening. Uh, stop.